All right, so here we are continuing our uh, our chicken stock demo um, from the live stream, which cut out apparently due to strange internet ghosts. Um, so all of the chicken has come up to temperature. It is all the way cooked. That's why it's floating. Um, usually meat, when uh, boiled or poached, when fully cooked, will float to the top of whatever vessel you're cooking it in. Um, and it's still releasing all that gunk and crud that we don't want in our finished product. So skimming gently, trying only to remove the particles of debris and fat and uh, excess junk. Uh, none of the actual liquid itself, because we want the highest yield possible, because uh, we will be reducing this into a sauce next week. So uh, the reduction process will take away a lot of liquid. So the more we start with, the more sauce we end up with. So as much as, as much as you can get, the better. Um, you can see here that I've added the thyme and bay leaves. So I use fresh bay leaves uh, because of the uh, it has a brighter, more astringent kind of woody, piney flavor that I really enjoy. Um, but if you can't find fresh bay leaves, as most supermarkets do not carry them, uh, dried is just fine. I would use I would use a couple more. Um, even though the, the, the flavor is a bit more concentrated with dried bay leaves, but uh, I, I feel like adding a bit more uh, in quantity kind of rounds out the flavor a bit more and you get it, it really comes through in the end product. So just letting those gently sit and kind of work themselves into the sauce. Um, since thyme is a heartier herb, I always add that before the vegetables. Gives it a bit more time to cook into the uh, the liquid. So here goes in the onion, carrot, leek top, and parsley stems, as uh, displayed in the earlier video. Those are the, the main flavor components as far as vegetables go for the chicken stock that I make. And you never want to stir the vegetables into the stock, um, as stated previously. You don't want to agitate the stock very much, because you'll, you'll kind of dredge up the stuff that may have sifted to the bottom that we'll strain away later. So for the cleanest stock, you just want to let it do its thing and the heat, the gentle heat from the stock will slowly cook the vegetables in uh, to the stock. And as, as everything cooks together, each, each component will release a bit of uh, stuff that you have to skim away from the stock. Um, so just constantly looking at the stock, seeing how clean it may or may not be, and uh, just skimming accordingly with your ladle. Um, so I'm actually going to be cooking dinner for my parents during this entire thing. This is kind of a, a, a surprise. So we're going to be breaking down some leeks, leaving the root end intact, slicing them in half lengthwise. And leeks do grow in very sandy dirt. Um, so that's why we cut them in half, so we can kind of splay the leaves open and I'm washing them under very cold water to get all of the uh, kind of dirt and crud that's accumulated during the growing process out of the leeks. Uh, you can see in the front pan there, the blue sauce pot, um, is gonna, we're going to be building an aromatic poaching liquid for the chicken, uh, the chicken breast that we'll all be cooking for dinner. Um, so to, to actually break down the leeks into usable pieces, I slice all the way through the bottom of the leek once it's washed. Um, with the root intact so that the leaves don't kind of uh, get away from you and you have a nice nice easy kind of stalk to slice from with a uh, very nice gentle even strokes slicing each piece of the leek into approximately uh, the same size so that they cook evenly um, because undercooked leeks are very tough um, especially the outer kind of more green leaves are uh, quite rough to chomp through so very thin, very even strokes, very quick, um, doubling up your leeks for efficiency here. Um, in the restaurant, we would do probably three at a time with a very large chef knife, um, especially for things like a braised leek risotto, um, where you need probably three liters of leeks every night. Uh, very, very, very finely chopped, so that would be you know, 10, 10 to 12 leeks total. Um, doubling them up definitely gives you the maximum uh, efficiency as far as slicing Oh, project time. I guess project time goes. 
Um, I'm also doing uh, roast potatoes. So these are just uh, red new potatoes sliced in the uh, oblique in an oblique cuts. Uh, to one, it, they're a nice shape on the plate. They kind of sit um, at different angles and kind of they pile up really nicely. And they're also very uh, even in size. So again, thinking about cooking time, uh, you want to break down your vegetables into even even sizes so that uh, they cook evenly. And there's a sous chef mom <laughs> handing me a, uh, it's a Japanese sweet potato. So it's a white variety of sweet potato, um, roughly the same density as the potatoes, um, but a very, a very kind of sweet, uh, earthy flavor to those, just adding a, adding a few of those into potatoes for difference in flavor, a little bit of different texture. They roast really nicely. They kind of caramelize and get very sweet. Um, so adding just a touch of fresh olive oil to the pan, um, which already has canola heated in it. I always use canola when searing things first because it has a very high smoke point um, and will not break down at high temperatures. So it's good to start with canola and then get a nice get a nice crust going on your potatoes and then just throw a bit of a bit of nice tasty olive oil um, in and around your potatoes. So being being porous, they they tend to soak up that um, oil and whatever you decide to flavor it with. So just right now I have a, a little bit of salt and potatoes and oil, and that's all that's going on there. Uh, the front right pot now you can see we've added chicken stock to the aromatic vegetables. Uh, so there's onions and herbs, uh, thyme, rosemary leaves, and a bit of parsley. Um, and just letting that infuse with a little bit of salt and lemon juice. And a little bit of apple cider uh, will go in there just before the chicken so that you get a nice fresh apple cider flavor. Um, and we'll be adding apple cider to the leeks later as well to braise those down so you get kind of apple throughout the dish, which is a very nice kind of wintery. I like wintery fruits. Um, apple tends to be something I use a lot of just because they're readily available and they're delicious. So the potatoes, the only thing that's been added is uh, salt and pepper at this point. Just letting those get a nice sear on each side. Trying not to move the pan too much. Nice gentle medium heat. Um, so you don't want to scorch the potatoes because burnt potatoes taste like burnt hair. It's really, really not enjoyable. So here we're just slicing up some nice slab bacon. Uh, apple with smoked bacon. Again, apple going throughout the entire dish. So just nice like lardone pieces, probably. Um, the width, the width of your small finger, uh, your pinky finger, uh, about to your first knuckle, so very small pieces. And the back left pan has been heated with just a tiny, tiny bit of oil, uh, and the bacon will go in there momentarily. There's a little bit of fresh thyme going onto the potatoes and uh, sweet potato. Nice shot of my neck there. should probably get a haircut, trim up my uh, hairline a bit. And you can see the bacon going into the sauce pot to render. Stock is bubbling away very, very gently. That's going to cook for a bit of time. A uh, tiny bit of butter going on top of the potatoes and yam, or uh, potatoes and sweet potato, then going into the oven at 350 uh, Fahrenheit. All right, you can see the, the bacon is now bubbling away at very, uh, it's, it's high, medium to high heat. So you get a nice crispy bacon. Um, you render out the fat really evenly as well, uh, which will help in the uh, cooking of the leeks. So you can see all that all that rendered bacon fat just kind of hanging out in the pan. That's going to serve as the uh, the lubrication for the leeks. So we're not going to add any more oil, no olive oil uh, or anything. So we're just using a bit of canola to start, and then all that nice tasty rendered bacon fat, which of course carries the uh, kind of the porky, bacony flavor throughout the entire uh, finished product. So the leeks that we sliced earlier going into the pan, that's been dropped to a medium heat since we're not trying to render the bacon anymore. It's very crisp, um, or well, re rendered enough so that the, uh, the pieces of fat and connective tissue in the bacon won't be chewy. Um, just a bit of salt going onto the leeks to help kind of draw out some moisture and get those cooking And uh, adding, adding salt um, at the beginning, the middle, and the end every time you cook anything. So if you season everything right at the end, 
it's just going to taste like salt. But if you season throughout your cooking process, it kind of mellows and helps um, helps flavor the dish gradually instead of like, oh, no, that's not salty enough, and then just adding, you know, a handful of salt uh, at the end. So you can see the poaching liquid is not simmering at all. There's like one bubble every every couple of seconds, which is great uh, for poaching. You you don't want boiling. You don't want simmering. You just want very 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 gentle heat. A uh, little bit of white wine going into the leeks. Uh, I believe it's Sauvignon Blanc or a, a really sharp Pinot uh, Grigio. Not a, not a sweet wine. Um, because onions have a tendency to cook down to be a bit sweet. Uh, a bit of apple cider going in to the pan to kind of, you know, carry carry that apple flavor throughout the entire uh, the entire meal. A little bit more salt. A tiny bit of olive oil. I, I fibbed earlier. A uh, little bit of olive oil just for, I mean, I, I just, I'm a sucker for olive oil. I love the way it tastes. Checking the potatoes, just give them a, a quick stir, making sure that no sides are browning too far. Constantly stirring the leeks, making sure that you're uh, scraping down the sides of your pot so that uh, you don't have a, uh, a ton of stuff burning to the edges. All right, so now for the chicken. Uh, on the back side of every chicken breast is the chicken tender, which you can just pull away and save for later, making fried chicken fingers or you know whatever you want. And there's always a bit of a connective tissue right under that, and it's denoted by a very clear like white line of connective kind of gristle, I would call it. You know, kind of like in a steak where the chewy, the chewy, gross bits that you don't want to eat. Um, then I'm just trimming off some of the uh, the bits of white fat that you know. Since we're going for poached chicken, we're just trying to take away all the uh, all the bad stuff. So we get a nice, nice clean, tender bite of chicken. All right, and then to portion these, uh, obviously the breast of chicken is very large at one end and very thick compared to the other. So wanting to to cut just where it starts to taper off, so that you get nice, nice thick portions first. And that there I think about putting in the end of the fillet, but no. You want to throw in the large pieces first so that they start to cook. If you throw it in all together, the little the thin end bits are gonna overcook way before uh, the big pieces of the breast are done cooking. So I'd say two two or three minutes before you uh, you want to serve well, the breasts are being cooked the the big per portions of the breasts are being cooked three three minutes ahead of the the smaller portions. And you can see the chicken tenders I just threw into the chicken stock because, you know, why not? It's going to cook for another hour or so. So there's everything. Just chicken is poaching away. Leeks are they're cooking. Liquid is reducing. Checking that. Adding a little bit more salt. Kind of just tasting, feeling it out. Yeah, you can see the, uh, the end bits of the chicken breast are going down into the poaching liquid. And that's kind of a, I don't have a, a specific time for those things. Uh, it's just sort of a, a feel, a feel, a feelings thing. Um, and the last portion of the dish is going to be roasted asparagus. Just pan roasted asparagus, really simple. So he heating a pan uh, with just a bit of canola oil in it, making sure all of the uh, chicken is submerged in the poaching liquid so you don't get raw, little raw spots. Little salt going down in the asparagus pan. I always add salt um, to the bottom of the pan just so that you guarantee you season one side of whatever you're adding to the pan. Asparagus in, very nice even even uh, line of asparagus. And this will be this will be roasted all the way through, so we'll be uh, flipping over the asparagus momentarily. But hot pan, a little bit of caramelization on the outer leaves of the asparagus. Um, one thing everybody should have is a tiny little strainer for lemon juice. Look at how easy this is. Squeeze the lemon juice into one container, strain it into the other. Easy peasy. You don't have to worry about squeezing lemon seeds all over things that you're you know, trying to put lemon juice into. Um, one thing I've learned is never squeeze a lemon over a pan uh, 
of anything. Just I'll always drain it first, so that you're guar you're guaranteed not to add seeds or pulp or you know whatever it is. So salt and pepper on the asparagus. That's a pretty high heat. You can see you can see all the uh, the steam and smoke coming off of the asparagus. The tips are starting to change color as they interact with the uh, hot fat in the pan. Just tasting the leeks, making sure nothing's sticking to the sides of the pan, making sure it's reducing nicely into a uh, kind of a glaze, a glaze of a sauce. You know, it's not it's not watery, it's not dry. It's you know all that bacon fat is kind of emulsifying into that uh, apple cider and uh, leek liquid that has come out of the leeks as they cook it, uh, cook down. All right, so now I'm just checking the chicken um, for doneness. That's a feel thing. I don't really have a time, a timeline for you, but um, it should it should feel like if you grip your thumb and touch it to your ring finger, it should feel like that meaty that meaty part at the base of your thumb, kind of your palm. It should feel dense all the way through. It shouldn't feel squishy in the middle. It should be very uh, very dense feeling all the way through. All right, there goes in the lemon juice for the asparagus, just to give it that nice kind of bright acidic flavor, kind of balancing out the fat that we're using to cook, to cook it in. A little bit more salt. Always tasting as we go. A bit of olive oil, obviously. Getting a nice, getting a nice olive oil glaze on those vegetables. As vegetables cook, they always release a bit of moisture into the pan. And you can use that to your advantage with a bit of olive oil or a bit of butter and kind of glazing the vegetables with that nice like sheen. You get the flavor of the butter or the olive oil or the walnut oil or whatever you want to use. Just nicely coats the vegetables. All right, so chicken is obviously done. Since we put the, uh, the smaller portions in last, everything is finishing at about the same time. I'm just uh, removing those onto a tray with a bit of paper towel just so when you put it on the plate it's not watery. None of that poaching liquid runs onto the plate. So I don't actually have a, a finished plate up shot for this, but that's it. Um, chicken stock is going to be